Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and financial journalist and research engineer. After tonight's stunning uh, victories for Bernie Sanders, I did some mathematical analysis of the election, and I've determined that it is now more than 50% likely that he will win the majority of the pledged delegates. Um, so I don't want to reveal everything I analyzed um, because uh, it might tip uh, hands a bit, um, but let's take a look here. Uh, these are the remaining races. <clears throat> now, Bernie Sanders has a huge advantage with independents and with uh, Republicans compared to Clinton. And uh, Trump really isn't a Republican. He's more an independent. Um, Trump has succeeded in part by attacking the neocons and uh, corruption, which is uh, sort of a page from the Ron Paul playbook. Um, but he's also used uh, very uh, disgusting themes and uh, to um, get support. He's obviously a, a big personality. Obviously, a lot of people you talk to would say, well, he made billions of dollars. Uh, and real estate development is not exactly the most imaginative way to make money. And I personally find a lot of his projects gauche. No offense, uh, Mr. Trump. Um, certainly, your house is rather tacky. Um, I could certainly uh, uh, flaunt what small amount of wealth I have, but I uh, think it's uh, uh, disgusting. Uh, uh, and uh, I've seen pictures of his house, of his projects. and uh, But these people think that Trump uh, will make them rich too, and maybe he will. Um, fortunately, as Sanders said, uh, Trump will not be the next president of the United States, especially considering what happened in Washington and Alaska and presumably Hawaii. There's unofficial results uh, gathered from uh, precincts and so forth that indicate that he's going to win Hawaii at least by 65-35. So um, he's much stronger with independence, and he's the most popular pop politician in the country. The newspapers and the TV stations and the media don't want to tell us this, but if he's beating Kasich uh, by four points and Hillary's losing by four in the most recent poll, if he's beating Trump by 18 points and Hillary's beating Trump by 10 points in the most recent poll, any way you slice it, this man is the most popular candidate for president by a large margin. He's uh, and uh, one of the key factors is most of the people who vote for Clinton will vote for him, um, and uh, but many people will vote for him who will not vote for Clinton. Um, so let's break it out. Um, the ind with the independents, Sanders will probably take 60% of independents in a general election. And in a primary, he might take 75%. It all depends on where. So if we look at these elections, the key are the open primaries. We have Wisconsin, which is an open primary, with approximately a 96 total delegates, 86 pledged. Um, then uh, Wyoming, he's likely to win because of the trends of his winning in the West. New York is going to be tough. Connecticut uh, also uh, is going to be a, a bit of a wild card. It's near New England, and uh, it's near New York. Um, so, but even if we just uh, held 50-50 uh, roughly, New York, Connecticut, uh, Delaware, and Maryland, and did a little bit better in uh, Pennsylvania, we then come to Rhode Island where we do get independents allowed to vote. Indiana, uh, then uh, Guam, that's a wild card certainly. West Virginia uh, allows independents to vote. Uh, Kentucky, uh, difficult to say. Oregon, he's definitely going to win by a large margin. Puerto Rico, I think he has a very good chance of winning. California, he's if these trends continue, he's going to win probably 57, 43, something like that. He's going to slaughter in Montana. New Jersey, independents can vote, so he's going to do very well in New Jersey. So June 7th is going to be the day where he really makes it clear that he pulls ahead. Um, June 7th is a critical date. Of course, there isn't much that happens after that. So this is very good news. I did do all the mathematical analysis. 
Uh, we'll see what happens when Nate Silver updates his uh, work uh, over the weekend at 538. Um, but um, I see no reason why Bernie Sanders isn't likely to win the Democratic nomination at this point. At least the pledged delegates then comes to the fight with the superdelegates. And of course we all know that if the superdelegates deny him the race, he certainly would, could not be blamed for denying Clinton the White House <clears throat> by running third party. Um, and he might actually win. Because if you break it out as a three-way race, uh, what if Trump is denied the Republican nomination? We could have Cruz, Trump, Sanders, and Clinton all running. So who knows what will happen. But we don't need to think that far ahead. What we need is a majority of the pledged delegates <clears throat> or something very close to it. And then people say, how is he going to get what he wants done? Well, there's millions of energized people who realize we have to run for office. All of us have to run for office, for mayors, for uh, uh, state senate, state uh, 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 representative, uh, f uh, put pressure and, and, and uh, overturn the incumbents and have a crowdfunding like Sanders has had. So there will be a wave especially in 2018, 2020, and he must get a vice president who's absolutely uncrackable. The only person I know who I believe is uncorruptible, and I, I could be mistaken, but I believe that would be Tulsi Gabbard. My name is Alexander Hagen. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard is a woman that's of part Samoan, I believe part Caucasian origin. Uh, she uh, is from Hawaii. Uh, she was a... Uh, a uh, combat vet from Iraq. Uh, she resigned from the DNC to work with, uh, uh, to endorse Sanders. She probably was critical of the Michigan race. And she certainly does seem fearless, and that's what it's going to take. Uh, because the full uh, uh, changes to American democracy that we need, because we have a 10 layer cake of disempowerment and disenfranchisement from the fact that one in five black people in some of these states can't vote because of the war on drugs, thanks to Clinton in large part. Uh, uh, they can't even get food stamps. Uh, we don't have to get into all the issues, um, but uh, we have people who can't vote because of felony convictions, uh, many of them for nonviolent crimes. Uh, we have voter suppression going on. Uh, it's a concern tonight in Hawaii. Why aren't they releasing the results as they come in? Why do they have to wait to release them all at once? Arizona is a concern. Uh, the Clinton campaign, campaign which I, I can't blame them, I, 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 laud, I applaud them for, said, look, this isn't good for any of us, this Republican suppression. Now, I don't know if the Democrats didn't benefit from it as well. We know in Iowa there was some funny business. In Massachusetts, the exit polls didn't match. So this 10-layer cake of disenfranchisement and disempowerment of the American people, whether it's the campaign finance problem, whether it's these uh, untrustworthy voting machines, uh, whether it's uh, the fact that you have this irony here where Sanders has clearly got the most uh, uh, appeal of any of the major candidates and may not even be allowed to run because we have these lanes that you have to run in. So uh, you can't be the candidate most appealing to Republicans and Democrats uh, to win in aggregate. So if you if you're if you 40 percent of Democrats like you, 40 percent of independents like you and 40 percent of Republicans like you, um, all told, um, that is 50 percent of the American people. Whereas if 60 percent of Democrats like you, that's only 60.6 uh, times around 18 percent of the American people. And literally, if 60 percent of Democrats preferred Clinton, we had a closed primary, and Sanders was 40, 40, 40, because independents are now the majority, he wouldn't be allowed to run. <clears throat> um, so at any rate, very exciting night. Everybody get on uh, your uh, uh, phone, call your friends, call your family, Facebook, the people in these critical states. Pennsylvania is going to be very important. Obviously, New York, it is proportional all the way through, so every vote counts. Um, Puerto Rico is very interesting. Talk to your Latin friends. And California is absolutely critical. We must win either New York by 55% or California by 55% or we have to win Pennsylvania by 55%. We gotta hit one of these states where we're getting a decent margin, but it's very close now. And according to my modeling, he is more than likely to win if we don't screw it up. 
but we have to keep all the pressure on and we have to stay energized. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck. And feel the burn.